Barrett covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Is it in fact that the United States, the deep state that would be the military industrial complex, are they actually planning a preemptive strike on Russia? As we uh, titled the article this evening, Ukraine and North Korea only decoys uh, for a possible preemptive strike on Russia, maybe even China as well, come to think of it there. And what we're seeing, this of course is not something of our own statement. This here is uh, the article you're seeing here on FortRust.com. This is where Lieutenant General Viktor Poznikar actually stated this in a joint uh, security conference there in Moscow recently. Representatives of the Russian Armed Forces have stated that the U.S. is creating a military infrastructure near Russia's borders for the application of a sudden nuclear strike. Now, different analysts are, are stating that the U.S. military does not believe in a ground war that the U.S. would be successful going up against Russia and China, or especially Russia and China together. They do not believe that they could win a ground war, but they do believe they have the edge in winning a nuclear war and also being able to stop Russia from being able to respond. Now, this all comes on uh, the, uh, the, the theory that the United States would have to do a first strike, a preemptive strike on Russia, and then be able to stop Russia from being able to retaliate from an American preemptive strike. And of course, you cannot help but wonder if this is something that the military industrial complex, uh, the deep state government, the shadow government of the United States may be planning and has planned for quite some time. Just because we change presidents doesn't mean that anything has changed whatsoever when it comes to these issues. As we have seen clearly, the buildup inside of Europe never slowed down, not one single bit. And also the Fed. Uh, uh, high altitude uh, missile defense system that was deployed to South Korea that was promised to be deployed under that of President Obama, finally deployed under President Trump's uh, administration there. This has gone in at the uh, objection of both China and Russia, both saying that this is not even for North Korea. But North Korea, this is why no doubt the United States, uh, and, and I can't blame this on the president, but clearly the United States military has been provoking North Korea. Not to say that North Korea doesn't provoke right back, they certainly do, but all these mo monstrosity military drills on his border trying to get him to do something really stupid. And of course, Kim Jong-un is just about the kind of guy that would pull the trigger, no doubt. But you got to remember, as we've stated several times here recently on Israeli News Live, if Kim Jong-un uh, strikes or tries to do a, a first strike on the United States, Seoul, Japan, any of these places here, the U.S. could take them out in a matter of seconds. But China and Russia both have stated this could lead to a third world war. Look at the articles here. China warns, warns World War III is inevitable as North Korea prepares the last nuclear test. Now, this is an article from about a week or two ago uh, that was published here on the Express. <clears throat> but the point is, China warns of World War III. If it's just the United States and North Korea, how does that equal out to World War III? Unless China is planning on getting involved and Russia is planning on getting involved. And of course, not just the U.S., but that would involve NATO, that would involve Japan, all the other countries around the world would get involved. So it's obvious that China is not just looking at the United States dealing with North Korea, but China uh, as well as possibly Russia trying to stop the United States from any kind of attack on North Korea. We also have uh, North Korea and USA new updates as Trump and Kim Jong-un stand on the brink of nuclear war. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump are inching closer to World War III as tensions over North Korea's uh, nuclear program continue to grow. Here are live updates on the U.S.-North Korean conflict with all of the latest news. Once again, uh, the express.co.uk bringing up the latest report and... Uh, and it says here, the North Korea continues to ramp up tensions with the U.S. with Kim Jong-un threatening to conduct a sixth nuclear weapons test. This probably comes on the heel of uh, Kim Jong-un just recently declared today the United States has tried to kill him with uh, some type of chemical poisoning. So 
tensions are very high, but as I stated, we have the Lieutenant General stating in here, Victor Posnicker, uh, Posnier, he states here, this statement was made on April 26th, the first Deputy Chief of the Main Operations Director, Victor Posnicker, at a Moscow International Security Conference of the Russian Armed Forces. U.S. missile defense bases in Europe, ships with missile defense elements in the seas and oceans close to the territory of Russia, creates a powerful hidden impact component for the application of a surprise nuclear missile attack on the Russian Federation. Posner said the European uh, echelon of the U.S. missile defense system uses ground-based versions of radar systems and missile launchers, maritime defense systems. These launchers provide the use of a wide range of missiles, including Tomahawk and cruise missiles. But see, the thing is, is according to Dr. Roberts, this isn't the only reasoning for this defense system to begin with. Dr. Roberts details it very much, and also Top War did not uh, go unnoticed with what Dr. Roberts had to say in his own analysis. They picked it up as well. This is uh, topwar.ru is a very deeply embedded uh, nationalistic Russian uh, uh, online news source here, and they also are quoting True News in their article here. Very interesting, but they they do uh, cite in here that yes, that they're thinking that the United States is definitely going to do a first strike or is preparing for a first strike on Russia and China as well, both combined together. And of course, uh, his, his whole premise on this, Dr. Roberts, is the fact that the placement of all the anti-missile uh, uh, defense systems being placed both in Europe, also in uh, South Korea, uh, also in the Black Sea, the, the Baltic, uh, we, have, we have the Mediterranean, we have ships there, we have them in the Sea of Japan, etc. And, well, let me just read to you some of the things that he actually states here. All right, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts. Not everyone likes to hear about the threat of nuclear war. Some find refuge in denial and say the nuclear war is impossible because it makes no sense. Now, jumping on down just a little bit. It is extremely dangerous to all mankind for Washington to convince two nuclear powers that Washington is preparing a preemptive nuclear strike against them. It is impossible to imagine a more reckless and irresponsible act, yet this is precisely what Washington has done. And he also quotes Lieutenant General Viktor Posnikar, Deputy Head of Operations of the R Russian General Staff, has concluded that Washington, in pursuit of a global he hegemony, is implementing a, uh, an anti-ballistic missile system that Washington believes can prevent a Russian nuclear response to a U.S. preemptive attack. Careful studies have convinced the Russians that Washington is investing in and arranging components that have no further function than that to devastate Russia and cripple the country's retaliatory capability. In short, Washington is preparing a launch of a nuclear war. RT also reporting this as they put this up as well. As I explained previously, the theory behind the insane scheme is that after America's preemptive strike, Russia will be so devastated that Russia would not retaliate with any remaining forces out of fear that Washington would launch a second major uh, strike. Washington also plans to use agents in the place to assassinate as many members as possible of the Russian government, thus leaving the government in confusion and without leadership. Yes, the insane American, as he puts it, Israeli neoconservatives are, in th are, are this determined to exercise hegemony over the world. Yes, Washington is sufficiently criminally insane to risk the destruction of life on earth based on the su uh, su uh, su suppose supposition that Washington's offense will work perfectly and Russia, China's capabilities will be so degraded that no retaliatory response will occur. Now you might ask, how or why, how could the United States justify a preemptive strike on China and Russia, especially at the same time? Well, there's two different possibilities that I can see. North Korea being the main one. As I stated before, and as these experts also are stating, the analysts that, that we're looking at here, the U.S. has, has used... Ukraine, the crisis in Ukraine, the, the civil unrest, the everything that, that, that caused Ukraine just to fall apart, 
and blaming everything on Russia when it was never Russia to begin with. It was a CIA-backed coup that caused the collapse of the pro-Soviet uh, or pro-Russian government, uh, that of the former president uh, uh, Yukonovich. And now we have the situation in North Korea, which everybody knows Kim Jong-un is certainly going around threatening the entire world that he's going to use nuclear weapons on them. And I personally don't think that Kim Jong-un would ever get a nuclear weapon successfully to leave North Korea's uh, airspace without being shot down by the United States. But that being said, and China and Russia saying that this would spiral out of control, the first moment China and Russia begin to knock down Tomahawk cruise missiles coming in on North Korea, when the United States is justifying a reason for attacking North Korea, that's what will give the United States a reason for a preemptive strike on either Russia or China and Russia together. And I think the first response would be to go for Russia singularity, and then, of course, China, if China seems to want to join with Russia to defend Russia, then they will take them both out. And as the, uh, Dr. Roberts is stating here, that they believe that they can actually do it. And this is something that studies have been done on in the United States to see if they could survive. What would be the, the outcome of a Russian-U.S. Uh, nuclear war exchange? Is there a survivability? Well... Seems like the military industrial complex seems very bent that they have the ability to survive. And we just don't know how that's going to go, but it's not looking good to begin with, friends. Not looking good at all. Uh, the U.S. military security complex has, has clearly prevailed over Trump's intention to normalize relations between the U.S. and Russia, and the anti Russian venom continues to pour out of NATO and Washington's European vassal states. The majority of the American people seem to have accepted the propaganda that Russia is the number one threat to the United States. With propaganda controlling the explanation, Washington's aggressive actions are explained as defense against a threat and not as a policy that will end life on Earth. Another extraordinary point that Dr. Roberts brings up in his own article here. Very, very uh, detailed article, and I think it's worth uh, your time reading. We'll have it posted in the links below here. Uh, but there was something else that I wanted to share with you guys as well. Now, I blew this up on the screen and behind me. Right here, this particular article right here. I just want you to see this is also quoting Lieutenant General Victor Posnicker. All right, it says, U.S. radars cover almost all Russian territory. This is from the Russian uh, MOD report here, the AnnapurnaPost.com. And it states in here in the one line, according to Lieutenant General Victor Poznikor, U.S. Defense, missile defense system also threatened space exploration activities by other countries, including, and that's all we can see, but the title says it all. U.S. radars cover almost all Russian territory. Keeping in mind, we also have, uh, I don't know if we have the, uh, air defense systems in Afghanistan, but that's to the south of Russian border. Uh, but here's what happens if you click on the link. I want to just show you here. I'm, I'm on it. I click on it. This is what you get. 404, sorry, page not found. The page you are looking for was moved, removed, renamed, or might, never exi not, might have never existed. And I've tried multiple ways, multiple times to be able to open up this post. You're just not going to do it. So I guess maybe he went and these, these people here in March 28, 2017, went a little bit deeper than what they wanted anybody to be able to see. Then we have another issue coming up. Sputnik reporting U.S. House bill on port controls amounts to a declaration of war, says one Russian senator. A U.S. House Representative Bill establishing control over the Russian Far East ports envisions a show of force and thus amounts to a declaration of war, the chairman of the Russian Upper House of Parliament's International Committee told Sputnik. This bill, I hope, will never be implemented because its implementation envisions a scenario of power with forced inspections of all vessels by U.S. warships, Konstantin uh, Koshkev said on Friday. His comments follow the report. Uh, passage on Thursday of a House bill uh, 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 enhancing sanctions against North Korea, outlining inspection authorities over Chinese, Iranian, Syrian, and Russian ports. The latter included the port of uh, Nakhoda Vanino and Vladivostok. Vladivostok, by the way, is where Russia has its military sitting right now on the very 
border of North Korea only eight miles away or eight kilometers away. I forget which one it was there. So yes, this is something that's keeping Russia very much tense right now with the United States. And of course, uh, not making the situation there any, any better at all. North Korea, U.S. starts moving the THAAD, as we already know, the defense system to South Korea, the deployment site there. Uh, that has already been done successfully. And this is one of the reasons why there is so much concern. And another thing I want to just throw in here in closing our broadcast today, this Russian article here just really kind of threw me for a loop. Russia is in the final stages of selling the S-400 uh, system for 500 million U.S. dollars to Turkey. And it seems like that the United States keeps doing, the, the, the military leaders, they're very, very, very provocative moves they're making. And the latest move, the United States uh, there to support the Kurds in Syria on the Turkish border, and now Erdogan threatening the United States uh, that they may end up taking out some of their, uh, some of the U.S. military in that area if they continue to support the Kurds, makes it once again look like that Turkey is siding with, the, uh, siding with Russia. When in fact, I believe it's another ploy on Turkey, playing the bad guy just long enough so when war does break out, Erdogan will have the United States' back. And you have to understand, I mean, I'm still an American, so I still love my country, and I don't want to see my country involved in a war with Russia by no means, and, uh, and I'd have to support the United States uh, regardless here. But the, the, the point comes down to this, though. When a deep state government is inciting a preemptive strike on Russia just because they want to have the hegemony of the world, that is completely unethical, ungodly, and completely out of control. Uh, maybe. I know there's a lot of people who believe that China and Russia will take the United States down. There's been prophecies done on this. That Maybe that would be so. Uh, if they do the preemptive strike, then there is much greater uh, possibility of this. In fact, the other day when I mentioned that Russia was burying nuclear bombs off the shore, keeping in mind that was, a def I think, a defected uh, Russian colonel that stated that. And uh, as one brother sent me an article, just a reminder, he says that the U.S. has been planting those nuclear devices off of the eastern coast as well, to blame on Russia and make it look like that Russia did a nuclear blast underwater and caused these tsunamis. But you have to keep in mind, and let me just see if I can pull this up for you quickly. There was, uh, there was a one, um, there was actually a, a, a Russian uh, political leader that, uh, that, that claimed that Russia uh, caused the uh, Fukushima uh, disaster. It was actually Vladimir Zerbinovsky that actually made this particular thread here on an interview with television there uh, in the Russian Federation. Uh, we have subtitles on the screen here for you, but I'm going to play just a portion of this for you and read the subtitles and kind of stop it as we go just so you can see what he actually states here. He starts off with Russia with lots of money and resources. He's actually going into saying that all the other nations, including the European Union, United States, China, all are on the verge of collapse. But he says Russia has lots of money and lots of resources. Well, I don't know about the lots of money, but Russia does have a lot of resources. In fact, some estimates have put it that they have the, the majority of the world's resources. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't know, but listen to what he says here. And then he goes on to say, and the new weapons, with which nobody knows anything about, not yet, as he states there, speaking about the Russia has. With these weapons, we will destroy any part of the planet within 15 minutes. No explosions, no ray bursts, not some kind of laser, no lightning, he says. Mm -hmm. It's a calm and a quiet weapon instead, he says. With which whole continents will be put to sleep forever. The girl that he's that's interviewing him seems to be laughing about it as if it's a joke. That's all. Then he says, that's all for now. Uh, then she says, there was that tsunami in Japan, right? I say, if you want even the tiniest 
Kareel Island from us. You will have to dig into the wreckage and debris of their buildings. And 120, 120 million of you will all die. And that goes for the rest of the world too. Everybody should start thinking about their own future. And the future of everybody else. Are you still thinking about selling your uh, Gregorian wine to Russia now? Or Georgian wine, sorry. You want UN observers? Do you want the world to forget the world Georgia completely? The word Georgia, excuse me. It will be the Russian Turkish border instead. Then he says there will be another tsunami on the other side of the planet in the Caucasus. That will be the end of you. Now, what does he mean by that? Another tsunami in the Caucasus. And he said, that'll be the end of you. So, you know, he's living in Russia. It's not like, uh, you know, the defector that says Russia has planted these nuclear bombs along the co coast of the United States and calls it sleepers. Uh, and I know there was another uh, interview that he was in that I also saw that he spoke about this. And he actually brings it up saying, you remember Fukushima? And he talks about, we can do it again. Take it for face value, whatever you want to say. I don't know myself, friends. All I know is we're living in a very volatile time. By the way, just to let you know, in closing with our broadcast this evening, President Trump has announced today that he will be going to Saudi Arabia, then to Jerusalem, then over to see the Pope in Rome. That seems just a bit odd that he's going to go see the Pope. Uh, also, he has another meeting, uh, the G20 summit there, also in Rome. And uh, we are looking to possibly try to get down there, haven't decided which event we're going to try to cover as of yet when President Trump comes in, but we will be covering it. Israeli News Live will be there. We will need your help in making these things possible as well. And again, we're also getting down to the final wire on trying to make the decision on going on to satellite television in the United States. Uh, I'd love to do it in, all over the world, but we just don't have that type of financial ability. If you have a business that you would like to sponsor this with, I'm sure that's tax deductible as far as advertisement, you can advertise on uh, the um, news feed that we will be doing on satellite television uh, throughout the United States, 20 million homes from what I understand that we go in. We're looking at prime time uh, event as well, looking at two different times. Let us know, uh, send us an email, We'll put our email address here in the description box there so that you can email us to let us know if you would like to try to sponsor one of these broadcasts uh, or if you just uh, don't, don't have that type of finances because I know that's pretty, pretty much in depth, uh, but you would like to help contribute to that or even to the trip that we'll be making to try to cover uh, President Trump coming to meet either the Pope or to the G20 summit, not sure which meeting we'll get to, but we're going to try to get to one of those. Definitely go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, or right on our YouTube channel, just above the subscribe button there, you can donate there. Thank you for your help and your support. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Eric.